Hi, welcome, and I hope you're doing well. This video here, I'll be doing a battery replacement on an Acer laptop. This Acer model number here is a V3575T71U5. Or maybe you can look here, it says Acer Aspire V3-575 series. It looks like the make model is 2016, April 20th. Alright, so let's get started. The first thing I need to do is to remove the back plate. And they are all Phillips screws. So go ahead and get your Phillips screwdriver. And remove all the screws. The way they make this laptop is they have the battery built inside the computer. It's not something where you can externally pop it up open. It's something that you need to remove the, uh, the cover to get into the battery. So when I take it apart, if I see something that is easier for you know, an upgrade or replacement, I'll point it out for you. At least you do not have to open up your laptop. Uh, to, to, to find it at least you know from this video you can see what is inside of the laptop all right there's a lot of screws so uh, let's get going with it it looks like all the screws are the same size Okay, so the next step we're trying to open up is the CD ROM. Just pop it right up, slide it up. Okay, and then there's three more screws here. All right, so it looks like I have all the screws removed. The next step I'll be doing is flip it facing up and try to pry open the um, the keyboard. It looks like the computer went to sleep, so I need to go ahead and shut it down first. While the computer is shutting down, let me go ahead and start prying open this palm rest. It's good that you, if you have a plastic prying tool, so you're not gonna give scratches on the plastic. Also, do not stick all the way in. You might damage the motherboard. Just stick just enough, and then try to pry open the, the cover. Okay, so once I have the plastic being pried open, be very careful. On the bottom right here, your speaker is still attached to the cable. So let me repeat that again. Right, so this is how it looks like. 
once I have the plastic pry open a little bit, I work my way around slowly and then I lift it up towards myself and you can see the bottom right here, your speaker cable is still intact. So go ahead and disconnect the speaker and that's how you can remove entirely of the back plate. Alright, at this point here, you can see this is your battery. And let's go ahead and disconnect the battery. And for the battery replacement, you might want to look it up for this model here, AL15A32. Alright, so let's put that on the side. Here, you get to see um, the motherboard. So right, this is your full motherboard. This is your DC jack. If you're planning to, you know, change out your DC jack, and this is just a cable that connects to it, I believe you can just remove the hinge. Not remove it, but remove this one screw, and then flip open the hinge. Get underneath the DC jack. There's a slightly double-sided tape that glue onto the DC jack, right? So this one, and go ahead and replace this if you have a broken DC jack. Where you can buy them, so look it up here. The model here is DD0ZRTAD1. I think that's what it says. So just look it up, you know, Google look it around, make sure you have the same matching DC jack. Alright, so let me put it back. We are not replacing the DC jack. All I'm trying to do today is to replace the battery. Okay, so that's that. I close the hinge back on. And put that one screw to close up the hinge. All right, at this point here, if you have a bad fan, you can go ahead and replace the fan by removing this cable. So this is the one that powers on your fan. It looks like there are two screws that holds onto the fan. So there's one here on the top and one at the bottom. And that's how your fan just come right out. Okay, so maybe look it up here around this number or here to find a replacement for your fan. All right, so let's put the fan back on too. And for those of you who think that your CPU is overheating, right? and it shuts down on itself and you feel like it's really warm and hot around this area this is where your CPU is what you can do is you can remove the three screws and this copper heat sink would come right out and apply some new thermal paste and that would you know helps to conduct the uh, uh, the heat and the fan can just blow it off alright so I'll show it to you there are three screws that holds onto this copper and this is how you remove entirely of this heat sink okay so it looks like it's still a little bit moist on that thermal paste so I'm not going to apply a new one but for those of you who you know the thermal paste is really all dried up get one of these alcohol wipes go ahead and wipe off the thermal paste here and also the one on your CPU and apply with the new thermal paste okay so let me just put it back down and put the three screws back on you can move on to the next explanation
All right, so the next one, um, this is a DDR3 RAM. Okay, so it says PC3. Here when it says PC3, that stands for DDR3, and this is four gigabytes. So four and four, there's eight gigs. You probably can upgrade to maybe eight and eight, up to 16 gigabytes. Um, but yeah, so this these two are your RAM. You want to slide it in first in a certain angle. Okay, slide it in and then push it down. And you can hear that the two clipper on the side will just lock your your RAM back on too. This is your Wi-Fi. If you have a bad Wi-Fi, you can do a Wi-Fi replacement by using that. And finally, this is your hard drive. And this is a regular hard drive. If your hard drive crash and you wanted to change to a solid state drive or maybe upgrade for better speed, better performance, I highly recommend to go with the solid state drive. All right, to remove the hard drive, I think it's just as simple as just lift it up and slide it out this way to your left. Okay, so this is your regular hard drive. Slide it back in and then it will just sit right on. And for people who need to do the keyboard replacement, uh, just by looking at this keyboard right here, the way they make it is they're bolted down with this plastic. So the company who makes them, they punch it down and it is not a screw, meaning that um, you cannot just remove the keyboard. You would have to replace entire uh, palm rest. So this is what we call the palm rest, the keyboard and the touchpad entirely, right? So this, this whole big piece right here is one set altogether. And as you can see that the keyboard has no um, way where you can just remove and replace separately just the keyboard so entire piece you would have to replace all together so to do that you would have to end up transferring all of this like the motherboard everything over to the new uh, keyboard the palm rest all right so i think uh that's pretty much it i have explained pretty much everything uh and this one here does not have the M.2 NVMe SSD slot, so I don't think it can uh, can run on an M.2 drive. All right, so um, this is it. And if you have any question, just comment below. Um, if you know, if you want me to make more videos about uh, computer stuff or any IT stuff, uh, just send me a message. You know, from time to time, I'd like to make more videos for you guys to watch. Uh, and explain certain things you know hopefully it gives you a better idea and uh, something that you want to you know do the repair yourself and, and whatnot so uh, I wish you well and wish you good luck to do the replacement yourself and if you have any question just do not hesitate alright and until next time I really appreciate if you give me a thumbs up like the video or share with your friends and help me to grow this channel all together. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye.